Hi, everybody in Australia, in Asia, and wherever you may be listening from. I'm Mark Prensky, and I'm here to talk to you about empowering the humans of the future. I'm here to give you hope and vision. And as usual, I'm here to give you some new perspectives. Here's one. Can you see the future through the eyes of your kids? They're growing up in a very different world. They've come, sadly, into a world of COVID. They've also come into a time of huge technological change and disruption. And a time of great problems, as big things like climate change and population growth and income and other inequalities are in the world. In many ways, they've come into a world of fear, and we have to help them. Doing the same things online will certainly not help kids face their future. Making lists of 21st century skills will certainly not help kids face the future. In order to fix and face the problems of the future, our kids need to become more powerful. The antidote for kids' fear is empowerment. The antidote to the fear of the COVID virus is the I can belief. Now, empowering our kids requires that they be capable of doing real world accomplishment. It requires that they become symbiotic with their new technologies. And it requires that they understand their own uniqueness so that they know how not to be automated by machines. But above all, empowerment requires their adopting new empowering beliefs. And a beliefs divide is actually emerging and that that divide is going to be far more important than the digital divide that we all are concerned about today. Beliefs are very interesting. I have been looking into beliefs for some time. We know very little about them. And here are some of the things that I have found out about beliefs. And I'm not expecting you to read this, nor will I read it to you. But you can take a screenshot and think about it at your own. What I want to draw your attention to are the two last things on the list. That while beliefs are almost impossible to circumvent while you have them. People die for their beliefs. They filter everything through them. On the other hand, we can change our own beliefs completely and quickly if we become aware of them and want to change them. And sometimes this happens to people in therapy, their personal beliefs, and sometimes it happens to populations. As Yuval Harari points out, the entire population of France in 1789 believed in the divine right of kings until very shortly later, they all believed in the sovereignty of the people. Now, typically, we try through teaching and reinforcement to pass our own beliefs to our kids. The problem is that too many of our beliefs are not empowering to kids. I could give a talk on any one of the topics of empowerment, but this one I'm going to focus on beliefs change, because if we want our kids to be more powerful so that they can deal with the problems of their times and of the 21st century, they need to believe that they are empowered. And empowering our kids starts with putting more powerful beliefs into ourselves and into our kids. It turns out that our kids are already inventing new beliefs for their new times. New beliefs about technology, new beliefs about networks and being networked, 
new beliefs about power. Here's a whole list of places where beliefs are changing in the generations and in our times. And again, take a screenshot and you can consider this on your own. In all new beliefs, there are positives and there are negatives. Some will work out, some won't work out, some we're concerned about. They're all experiments. But it's really important that we understand these beliefs. The most powerful thing that we can do for ourselves and for our kids is changing beliefs. Because changing belief is what creates the future. If we stay with the same beliefs, we will have the same past that we did. Beliefs change is already happening today. We are seeing a new beliefs divide emerging, and that beliefs divide may be more important than the digital divide. And it leaves us with an incredibly important choice to make, a crucial choice, whether we are going to bring our kids backward into the past. There's an incredible wish on the part of many people to go back to the past, to go back to what we were comfortable with. Or will we help our kids move forward into their future? They are already empowering themselves for that future. We can either empower them further or not drag them back to the past. Which side are you on? So I'm gonna try an experiment. I'd like for you to all repeat this phrase out loud. I am open to changing my belief. Why would you say that out loud? Why is that important? It's a form of priming. If you say this, if you think this and you say it, you are more likely to be open to changing your beliefs. So now let's look at this beliefs divide and see what we can find out. Old beliefs, and when I say old, I mean the 20th century, because all the adults of today were born in the 20th century. The old beliefs are that kids are powerless. They can't do much because when we were young, we couldn't. Another belief is that technology is just a tool, that humans are what counts, that our humanness is there whether or not we have or use tools. Another old belief is that in person is always better. It's always good to be there to look someone in the eye, to touch them, to hug them, to talk to them face to face. We also believe that individual work matters. This is a huge academic belief. Do your own work. Don't copy, don't work with others, don't collaborate. That's an old belief. Along with this idea that mastery comes first, that you have to master the material and understand everything before you can accomplish something useful. And the final belief that I'm gonna cite here is that education, as we do it, what I mean by education is as we have done it in the 20th century with schools and classes and curricula and testing, that that education is really important. And more than that, it is necessary for all our kids. Those are the old beliefs. So what are the new beliefs that can take their place? The first one is that kids are powerful. They can do huge things to improve their world starting at very early ages. And there's lots of evidence of this at Design for Change and other places. 
The second new belief is that technology is not just a tool, but it is becoming a new part of us, like a new arm. And what that means is that if we take the technology away from kids, we're not dragging them back to a better past when we were more human. We are in fact cutting off a body part and that is hurtful. Another new belief is that online and in person are just two modes of communication. They are of equal value and the one that we use really depends on the situation. Obviously, COVID has showed us that we can use different modalities. Another new belief is that networking and collaboration and teamwork matter more than individual work. Very little today gets done only by individuals. Another new belief is that it's not learning that has to come first, it's accomplishment. It's not mastery, it's accomplishment. Obviously mastery can help accomplishment, but often accomplishment brings new things to master. And finally, while helping kids grow is gonna to continue to be important and we all believe in it, the new belief is that school and classes and courses and testing and everything we offer may not be the best way for everyone. So we're starting to invent new alternatives like empowerment hubs and other things. And I think that's gonna come much more in the future. Now, let's get more specific about education. Old beliefs include that learning is what education is all about. Education is totally conflated with learning. It's about bettering yourself, becoming a better individual, achieving high things. It's about learning to learn. That's a big word we hear a lot from people these days. It's about motivation and finding our own motivation and especially finding ways to motivate kids. It's about high grades and high rankings. It's about academic thinking. That's considered very, very important. And it's preparation. It's knowing what's coming and therefore we are preparing you for what we know is coming. The new beliefs are quite different. It's not about learning. Education is about accomplishing and we learn in order to accomplish. We're not interested so much in bettering ourselves we like to do that, but we do that in service of bettering the world. That's the goal, to make a better world. It's not about learning to learn, therefore it's about learning to accomplish. And not about just motivation to learn whatever it is that we offer, but applying your own passion with impact on the world. It's not just about academic thinking, it's about using thinking in the real world. And it's not just about preparing for what we know is coming. It's about being ready for anything. So if you believe that kids have little power, if you believe that before kids can do anything useful in the world, they have to have all the specific knowledge and skills that we offer and master them. If you believe that learning is what education is about rather than accomplishment, and if you believe that technology is just a tool that is optional for our being human in the future, then you are on what I think is the wrong side of this new beliefs divide. I've written a book about beliefs. It's a very short book. It can be read in about five minutes. It's online, it's free. And I'm gonna show you some excerpts from that book. These are beliefs for 21st century kids. Here's the URL that you can use to get that book. Beliefs for 21st century kids. I am first 
a member of the human race and a citizen of the world before my many other identities. I have a unique set of dreams, passions, strengths, and capabilities that no other person has. I can understand my uniqueness and apply it to bettering my world in my own way. I have the power to create positive change as an individual and even more powerfully in team. I can and will take my dreams as seriously as I want to. I live in a technology age and will make my human and machine components work well together to solve problems. So why should we even care about all this and about beliefs? Because beliefs not only create the future, but they're most empowering when they fit the times they are in. And every kid now knows that their world is very different from the one their parents and teachers grew up in. No matter what they see around them on the ground, all they have to do is look in the sky and they will see the contrails of Elon Musk's Starlink network that is making them into a connected world. So the vision that I offer is of powerful kids who can fix the problems and build their new world. Our kids want to be powerful, they tell me all the time. And holding on to our own beliefs will not help these kids. So my hope is that you will choose to bring your kids forward into the future rather than back into the past. My hope is that you will re-examine your own beliefs in light of this talk and choose new beliefs for yourself and for your kids that empower the kids and better fit their future. Today, we are all afraid of the future, especially the kids, but they get it mostly, I think, from us. The antidote to their fear is to empower them. But moving forward and not back and empowering our kids takes courage. And courage, in case you don't know, is feeling the fear and doing it anyway. So I'm here to encourage you and to give you hope that you can help create a positive future that empowers your kids. And our kids' hope is that we will change our beliefs in order to make a positive future happen for them and that we'll do it before it's too late. I know that we can do this and I salute you. Please write to me.